Recently, I received communication from David Wetzel, a very fine creation researcher and a very fine scientist himself, intrepid in that he has been willing to trek into the very jungles uh, in search of evidence uh, that had been reported. And he's the head of Genesis Park a Foundation uh, that does tremendous research. And he sent me some communication recently that I thought was too good not to pass on to you. He said, there are five questions for evolutionists that I'd like to ask. And he said, so far, no evolutionist has been able to answer these at all. Any one of them, let alone all five of them. And I thought that was just too good not to pass on. The first question David Russell proposes is, where did all this come from? All of this, where did it come from? In order to explain how the universe could arrive from a Big Bang, from an infinitely small speck of energy to what we have, you have to totally ignore all of the laws of physics, basically the laws of thermodynamics. You have to totally re-explain in non-entity factors that just do not exist. It is fairyland. There is no science behind the Big Bang. Where did all this come from? You only have three possibilities. Number one, matter has always existed. Well, uh, that, uh, that is not fashionable in, in uh, physics or astrophysics nor science today because we know that there was a beginning. In fact, it has been established that there was a beginning to the expansion factor. So matter has not always existed. Uh, the second alternative is, well, this matter just came out of nothing. But that's against all the laws of physics, all the principles primarily of thermodynamics, that it would just pop out of nothing. Now, I know there have been some squirrely ideas about quantum fluctuations, and squirrely they are, because they meet none of the criteria of good science, good math, and good physics. There are some quantum fluctuation ideas that nothing could somehow wrinkle and produce something. That is absolutely absurd, and those who postulate this recognize it, yet they have to have some basic idea to ignore the third concept. First concept is that matter has always existed. That meets no scientific criteria. Second concept is that matter just popped out of nothingness. That meets no scientific criteria. However, the third alternative is that all of this was uniquely designed and came into existence by sound and energy. Now, currently, physicists and astrophysicists have recognized that the base of all subatomic particles is sound and vibration. And that is totally consistent with, in fact, mandated by the scriptures themselves. God spoke and it was done. The creation model is totally scientific. In fact, theorems that involved Occam's razor. And uh, those theorems have to do with the straight line being the shortest distance and a vantage point. And his theorems also mandate that any concept that has the least amount of assumptions is the plausible concept to accept. Well, the concept of evolution postulates another of the questions, uh, how did all of this come from rocks once it came into existence? There is no way that life could have originated from inorganic compounds. That involves one assumption, that is that organic compounds could arrive from inorganic non-living chemistry, could progress to living functioning cells, could progress to living functioning organs and living functioning entities, but all the entities have to be in place simultaneously for the organism to function at all. So all of these assumptions, they range from six to 13 to 15 assumptions. They're listed primarily as seven assumptions. 
placing all living systems in kinship, but not a single one of them has ever been observed, cannot be reproduced in the laboratory after billions of dollars of experimental procedures. Well, but creation begins with one simple assumption, that the universe and the living systems in it are so complicated they require a designer. That designer is the God of the Bible. David Wetzel goes on to ask other questions. First of all, where did it all come from? Secondly, how could a Big Bang create a fine-tuned universe that we see? Scientists recognize that it's fine-tuned to one part in a hundred billion, 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 billion. Absolutely impossible by accident. Thirdly, he asks, how could life come from rocks, from inorganic compounds? Fourthly, he asks, how could biological systems assemble by accident? They could not, and no evolutionary explanation is adequate. Finally, the fifth question he asked the evolutionist, and I'm asking the evolutionist viewing this episode today, how is it that we have a soul? We are a person who recognizes there is a God. Not to believe in God means you have to literally convince yourself beyond all the evidence. Why does a person disbelieve in God? Primarily, I know because I walked that trail. Primarily, it is because of resentment towards suffering and loss believing that God has not been fair to you. Therefore, if God has not been fair to you, you will just rub him out. And that's essentially what atheism does. I ask of my friends on the other side of the camera, just accept the facts and realize that you were created and put your trust in the God of the Bible. David Wetzel should communicate with us more often.